you know, let me add my voice to those who have already expressed regret and condolences over the unfortunate loss of lives that we've witnessed on the road. But for me, the spontaneous outburst of anger and emotion over the matter signals an awakening of the citizenry to their right to demand performance from their leaders and not to tolerate irresponsibility on the part of government. You see, on the 7th of January 2017, when Nana Akufuadu took office, he essentially had assumed responsibility for all assets and liabilities of the state of Ghana. So it became his responsibility to address all concerns relating to ongoing projects that had not been completed. And I do not want to bore you with the history of this route, but it is important just so that the facts are clear and we know who to hold responsible for what, because that is ultimately at the heart of governance. This road started under the Kofu administration. At the time that we came to office, it had reached less than 10% completion rates. There was no dedicated line of funding, as you would expect for a major road like that. So we had to float about 400 million Ghana cities in bonds to complete that road and three and two others that were on government of Ghana funding. So at the time that we were leaving office in 2016, the road itself had been completed. Concrete slabs and pillars had been erected for a footbridge to serve pedestrians. What was left was some finishing touches, staircases and guardrails and other things that would make sure that it was in good shape for pedestrians to use. Two years, in my view, is sufficient for the government that replaced us to have fixed this footbridge. They have had plenty opportunity and they have had the resources to do it. It does appear that they did not prioritize the completion of these footbridges. Because in terms of scope and scale, it is minimal compared to the overall, the overall size of that project. So what they needed was just a little push in order to address it. Now, having failed to do that, it is surprising that even in the wake of these violent demonstrations, we have had government officials refuse to take responsibility and go ahead to push blame on the previous administration. And if you follow the feedback that has emerged, and the public backlash that government officials who have spoken this way have received. It shows clearly that the citizenry is not prepared for that kind of narrative anymore. And that government simply should own up, take responsibility, and do what has to be done. Now, it has even been suggested, and it has been put there strongly, that the reason why these food bridges could not be completed was that the NDC government when exiting, sometime in 2016, collateralized the road fund. And so revenues were not flowing into the fund, and government therefore did not have the resources to carry out the completion of this project. It is true that the road fund was collateralized for 1.5 billion Ghana cities. But even then, that money was taken so that we could pay outstanding debts old contractors who were working on various roads. In addition to this, in fact, in 2008, the Kufa administration collateralized the road fund for a 300 million facility from SNIT. So part of the money that we took was used to settle that. 360 million was used to pay contractors. And we left 600 million Ghana cities in that account. That could have been used to either pay outstanding arrears owed or complete any number of projects that government so desired. In addition to this, something, the reason why I say they have had sufficient resources to do this is that you know that when ESLA was passed, somewhere in July 2015, every... What is ESLA? ESLA is the Energy Sector Levies Act, or what we popularly call Energy Sector Levies. Right. Now, every liter of petrol or diesel you buy, you pay 40 pesos, which goes into the road fund component of ESLA. If you look in the ESLA report presented in both 2016 and 2017, that fund averaging accrues 1.2 billion Ghana cities. And that is just 70% of the 
of the money that that fund needs. The remaining 30% comes from road tolls and transit fees. So in all, you have about 1.4 billion Ghana cities annually. So we took 1.5 billion Ghana cities in loans from UB. But at least up until the end of 2017, this government has been in a position to retire that loan in its entirety because of the inflows. In addition to that, they've had another 1.4 billion Ghana cities. So you expect that for minor works, like completing a footbridge on that stretch of road, government will have resources to do it if it was a priority. But you know what has happened? Because of government's own policy, these funds have been crippled such that the resources that go in are not sufficient to do anything more. Through capping, which means that only 25% of government revenue will go into the statutory funds. They take a huge chunk of the money that should go into the road fund. And their realignment, which means that they will take money out of it to finance government promises that may well be within the sector, but do not fall under the scope of the statutory fund in question. Let me give you some figures just to illustrate this. In 2018, if you look into the budget, they project rightly that about 1.4 billion Ghana cities will be realized to the road fund. They also say that they will take 829 million Ghana cities out of it because of capping, which essentially allows them to spend that money on consumption or recurrent expenditure instead of the capital investment that is intended for. And then realignment. So it, essentially, the road fund was left with 581 million Ghana cities instead of the 1.4 billion that they should get. So liquidity has not been a challenge, at least as far as the road fund is concerned. Something in addition to this, the road fund is not the only source of money that is used to construct roads. In fact, the bulk of roads that are constructed are done through loans and other sources of funding. Why? Through oil sales alone. This government, between 2017 and August 2018, has received 3 billion Ghana cities. In fact, 435 million of that <coughs> came as a result of a windfall because of higher than expected oil prices. In addition to this, they have added $8 billion to our public debt, or in Ghana city terms, roughly $40 billion. But that is what they've added. In terms of borrowing itself, if you look at their own issuance calendar and the annual debt management report that they sent to Parliament, domestic bonds alone, they've borrowed 116 billion Ghana cities. So if this road was a priority, they could easily have borrowed money to fix it, to avert the debts that we saw. In addition to this is the fact that domestic tax revenue alone, over the last two years they've been in power, ran in excess of 70 billion Ghana cities as of the middle of this year. So they've had substantial revenue and time to fix this particular project. Except that they have prioritized recurrent expenditure, consumption, over capital investment. And if you want to check, just look at the figures. In 2016, if you rely on the current rebased GDP, our capital to our capital expenditure to GDP ratio, which is what the current vice president used to assess our commitment in power to infrastructure, including the fixing of roads, was 4.5 percent of GDP. 2017, it slumped to 2.1 percent. 2018, as of June, it was 1.1 percent. So there is a decline, which means that this government is not committed to rolling out infrastructure in the same breath as we were. They favor consumption more than capital investment. And when you do that, infrastructure will suffer. So the, the, the attempt to blame the previous government for the situation that we are in is only serving to infuriate the citizenry the more. And that is why you saw that level of anger at Adenta. Surely, President Mahama, when he became president, added to that road to the extent that he could. We simply, because the last update was given in August of 2016 by Honorable Minister of the Roads Minister at the time. He said that the road was substantially completed, about 98% complete. The only thing left was a footbridge. Even then, structures had been erected to show that we were doing it. We simply ran out of time and we left. Having assumed office, it was the duty of the government of the day then to complete it. But if you do not complete it, and people complain, and they stage demonstrations, you need to be sincere and candid and admit that there was some laxity or lapse in your approach. I have, for instance, heard the president say in a Facebook post that this situation arose out of 10 years of neglect. 
when the evidence does not point to that. Again, look at the speed and dispatch with which, after these violent demonstrations, the problems are being addressed. Suddenly, government is in a position to fix this problem within a matter of a week. Yesterday, there were reports, indeed, I saw pictures of how street lights have sprung up overnight and how other facilities and amenities are being provided. What that means is that government has always been in that position. Whatever it is that they were able to do to get the contractors to agree to go on site to work, why did it take them so long to do? And to cap it all, you have government officials making statements that show insensitivity. Why? We've heard the president say that his topmost priority is the building of a cathedral. At a time when people were complaining of hardships and demanding upgrades in infrastructure to ease their lives, that is what the president felt was his topmost priority. Quote him right. He says priority it's a priority, priority among priorities. Absolutely. Because it's a topmost among mm. his priorities. Okay. That's what it means. I've no, it's, interpreted. It's, it's not the same. I don't well, want us to argue. Well, but, but he says it's a priority oh, among priorities. Let us not place us over this. Okay. It is clear what the okay. president So let's talk about He places much more emphasis. No, you see, I, I, right. I highlighted that to mm. show you that people are getting angry. And that anger stems from a certain lapse, a certain failure on the part of the political leadership to read the atmosphere, the temperature, the pulse of the country. And it is the reason why we had that level of agitation in Adenta. Mm. And I'm saying that nothing excuses the neglect of that project over the last two years, given its history and trajectory. And I think that a lot more could have been done much quicker because the, the amount of work left is not significant. It's okay. nothing that can be done within right. the two so, years, as we are witnessing now. Okay. There you, is also the issue of the motorway. Mm. And that also has a history. You know, as part of the MPS project, it was envisaged that the whole motorway will be reconstructed to facilitate the movement of goods from the port. Because of a disagreement between the uh, transport ministry and the roads ministry, that thing got bogged down in a dispute. So the NDC government, before it left, secured money for the motorway runabout from Japan. When President Mama went for the Takeout Conference in 2015, that is when that agreement began. And we got the money before we left office. So that project apparently is ongoing. But there has been some lack of information on, an, on what exactly the status of the repair of the motorway itself is. And it will be useful for government to be forthcoming at this moment and not wait for the agitation that has started, where people are insisting that they are not going to pay tolls to escalate into violent demonstrations before overnight they mobilize, mobilize resources to go and, and, and address the situation. What is clear is that given the age of that stretch of road, <coughs> it is a comprehensive redesign and reconstruction that will face the problem permanently. Mm. But it does appear also that there are things that can be done in order to ensure that whatever dangers exist now are addressed. So let us draw lessons from what has happened at Adenta. When we are elected into power, we need to take responsibility and stop playing politics and being partisan at every opportunity. People don't go and queue and vote for politicians because they think they are handsome or good-looking. They okay. expect results. So you and if on. you don't deliver yeah. the results, mm. people reserve the right to rail against you, as okay. we have seen. So it is a regrettable situation, but it's a wake-up call to all of us who are involved in this business of politics. That when we win power, mm. we must work to meet the demands of the people. Otherwise, there will be a day of accountability. Okay. Um, Kweku? Yes. Uh. Look, of course, people have died. The media suggests that it's 194. You have told us that official sources are talking about some 20. 24. 24. In my practice of journalism, I'll go with that 24 until some evidence contradicting it is brought forward. Yeah. Because what I know is that when you want to determine those things, you go to the appropriate agencies. Right. The police, MTDD, the MTTD rather, right. or the Road Safety, National Road Safety Commission. That's right. That's what I've been taught. Mm. So I'll rely on that yeah. now and suggest that the 194 or 200 
are just figments of people's imagination. Yeah. Is, is the reason I'm sticking to that official figure? You did a professional 24 thing. deaths and they say 164 injuries. Yes. So I was and not like near 200 deaths as has been reported by the media. Yes. Okay. It's, because you know, even though one death mm. is even critical right. and unacceptable. Mm. But when you talk of 194, it could also inflame passions and get people to begin to look at things in a different way. So it's important that accuracy right. is required of us. Uh, again, in principle, I am not against the citizens who stood up and spoke out. They may have done one or two things that uh, the law didn't, uh, doesn't, you know, uh, accept. The burning of ties on those roads are unacceptable. It's so unlawful. Indeed, granted that was spontaneous, it still is not covered by the Public Order Act, especially if they move in their mass and refuse to leave the scene when the police have arrived. Those are acts that we shouldn't condone. So whilst we support them in spirit and in principle, we should be able to tell them that there's a limit to how you can express your protest. Now I hear them talking of a Monday uh, uh, version that I'm sure they will be going under the canopy of the public They had Act. planned that before the accident. Yes, but right. I'm sure they would have been dealing with the police in yes. terms of notification. That is correct. That's lawful, and mm -hmm. I'm totally on their side in terms of expressing, you know, your grievances and anger and things through the legitimate channels there. But yeah. I ask a question, will that still be necessary? Ma by man Because it well, looks like that has been overtaken by the... Yeah, but events. if they decide to go ahead, I can't stop them. Okay. I mean, that's part of the democratic culture we are building. Right. Even though you make a reasonable point that if these things are going on, you could suspend that action, observe things for a while, and then if nothing is happening, you re-trigger. Okay. So it makes sense what you're saying. And then the politicization of it. Yes, I would have loved if we had done this debate or discussion devoid of the partisan element. But it appears that uh, in this country we are unable to do that. Uh, you began by even indicating to us what the president is supposed to have done. I haven't read the president's statement. That's yeah. the headline you put out. But obviously the president is supposed to be saying that this matter is about 10 years old. If I'm at, am I right? Yes. And that brings in a political element. On this very program, my good friend Felix began politically through in the partisan element. I clarified the that you said about this. By political opponents, which I'm entitled to. It's, yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but that's why I'm entitled to subject no it problem, to no problem. critical scrutiny. No problem. You see, first of all, if I got an impression, if my impression is wrong, you can quickly correct me. All right. But I got an impression that Felix was assuming that this particular project, mm -hmm. Medina Panta mm -hmm. reconstruction project, mm -hmm. was part of the Gang of Four. Yes. No. I was. No. I was, I was. It's not. I, I can give you the list of the Gang no. of Four. I'm telling we, you, the Gang of Four is this. The former the road minister appears to say it is part of No, we no. nicknamed it Gang no. of Four. Yes. yes. Even though I say Four I had I initiated I am going to prove it Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. Gang of Four, mm -hmm. Properly speaking, mm -hmm. the Tetakwashi Medina Road, mm -hmm. it was being done by Sonitra. Mm -hmm. Achumata Ufanko oh. Road, it was being done by China Railway. Mm -hmm. Kwafu Krum Apijua Road, it was being, being done by China Water and Electric. Mm -hmm. Then the rehabilitation of the Sunyani Road in Kumasi, that's the Sofo Line, mm -hmm. was being done by China Joe Engineering. Mm -hmm. These are the gang of four roads. Now, this particular road we are talking about, which is there, and I've got the consultancy, mm -hmm. the consultant's report here, mm -hmm. dated September 2014. This road was not a government of Ghana funded road. The Gang of Four were. Mm -hmm. And that's when they came, they took over from the Four administration, there were problems. Right. So they floated the bonds, mm -hmm. uh, Felix rightly mm -hmm. pointed to. He, he mentioned 1.5. In use of saying he corrects that, now, it's okay, supposed that, to be one point. No, you mean the collateralization yeah, of the one point two? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> this road was 
not government of Ghana founded. It was funded by the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa and the Saudi Fund. Mm. This road. The contract, the con I have it here, the contract was awarded July 2008. Construction proper commencement date was July, August 2009. The contractor is China Water and Electric Corporation. This is the consultant's thing. And indeed, interestingly, the NDC's own document, Better Ghana Agenda, mm -hmm. Top 50 Achievements of Professor John Evans Atamils, mm -hmm. led government in his first two years in office. Page 8. Medina Pantan Road, 5.6 kilometer. By their funded, they themselves. Mm -hmm. Work, and this is what they said. This is uh, dated somewhere 2012. Huh? I'll get a date soon, but this is what they said. Medina Pantan Road, 5.6 kilometer by the funded. Work is in progress on this project, though slow. The challenges that have been encountered, encountered include relocation of utilities and project affected persons. This is the NDC's own document. Okay. So they, t they themselves admit here that this was funded by the Arab Bank for Devel Economic Development in Africa, oh. making it clearly outside the coverage of the Gang of Four. So this is contrary to what Inusa Fuseni is reported of to course. have said. He said that, uh, as reported, that the project was part of the Gang of Four, which was started by President Kufo. It has no dedicated source of funding. During our time, on a yearly basis, we allocated funds for the completion of the project. So I ask, 1st January 2017 to the end, how much was paid to the contractor to go and complete the outstanding work? On 1st January until now, how much was paid to the contractor to go back to site? I'm he coming questioned. there. The contractor was on site because the contract was still binding. But the contractor was not executing the project. Mm. And it, has not, it had not been done since 2015 because they hadn't been paid. Mm. And because he was on site and because the, uh, uh, that contract was pending, I mean, still legally binding, you couldn't okay. take anybody there to go and do anything unless you agreed with him for okay. him to cease doing what he's doing or to pay him for him to continue. Mm. We'll come to those aspects. But this is the document I'm holding. Okay. This is Design, Review, and Supervision of the Takwashi Manfi Road Project, the Madina Pantan section, 5.6 kilometers. Final report dated September. 2014. If you go to the executive summary, uh, 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 summary, this is what it says. The contract was signed on 16th September 2008 and the order to commence work works, was issued on 29th July 2009. The initial duration, contract, duration of the contract was 18 months. And to date, the project has traveled within a time span of 60 months. Yet, it is not completed. The main reason for the undue delay is the non-payment of a chunk of the interim payment certificates issued. That's outstanding, main outstanding works being the coverage to the medians, road signs, road marking. This is official document. Mm. This is official document. I mean... Could, could now, repeat the outstanding in this mm, again. Coming, and mean, more. That's what that's what Clara was talking about. The if, main, you, if this is a part of it and you haven't finished this, what's your business in opening it up? By 2014, and this people? document is dated September 2014. 2014. Please read over that again. The outstanding. The work. main outstanding works being the coverage to the medians, and I don't really yeah. know what it is. We understand. Road. Ah, okay. Thank you. Road signs. That I think I have an idea. Hmm. And then road markings, etc. But in there, they give the elaborate right. on this. Okay? So, and they said this is pre construction period, mobilization. Mobilization began in March 2009, while actual construction works took off in August 2009. Now, what is interesting, huh? 
and I have the financiers here, the food bridges, on the food bridges, it's all here. Mm. But the important, interesting point, which I discovered, and see, when you come to page 49 of the thing on food bridges and street lights, listen to what it says. Traffic lights, it says, only metal posts are currently in position. That's September 2014. Street lights, works have commenced and 23 solar lights installed at six different locations. Food bridges, the point we are dealing with now. Works have reached appreciable stage on the six foot bridges. The main elements outstanding on all the foot bridges are the approaches, landings, guard rates. The outstanding works can be aggregated at 25%. Now, from September 2014, the foot bridges, this was the status. Mm. It is what it is now. Thank the approaches you. and the landing, it is thank what it is you. today. So thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, President Mahama, President Akufa. So we should applaud President Akufa? No, no, I'm not applauding. Well, well, no. please. Told, well, 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 just hold, just hold. You are seeking to, you are seeking to excuse him No, no, you sat here, my brother, you sat here. Wait, wait, wait. You Wait. sat here yes. mm. and created okay, the impression anyway, anyway, anyway. that mm. by 2016 mm -hmm. there was just a little left yeah, but relative I'm, to but, the, but I'm saying that by 2014, <laughs> uh -huh. you don't get a drift. I, I am okay. saying okay, right. that if indeed, okay. and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that by if 2016, and I agree, 2017, 2018, this administration could have resolved this matter. And reconcile this with what uh, Inu Safuseni says, mm -hmm. that between 1st January 2017 to the end, how much was paid to the contractor to go and complete the outstanding work? The same question then can be asked before the 2017 he talks about. How much is it that he claims was being allocated every year to complete which portion? Because by Fantastic. 2014, mm -hmm. this is what was outstanding. So if he says that each year they were making budgetary allocations to finish it, it was just the, the, the approaches and the landings. Thank the, you. This is what still remains undone. So you see, undone. the mm. point I was trying to underline is that this selective amnesia that informs <laughs> our discourse because we seek partisan advantage. Otherwise, my brother should have also considered that, look, if by 2014, this was the status of the food bridge, mm. 2014 September to 20, uh, January 7, 2017, you couldn't deliver. Mm. But you are able to question why this administration, and rightly so, because don't get me wrong, okay. also <laughs> 2017 to now has not delivered. That was the point I was making. Mm. That's why I said he was being selective, excluding their line of responsibility. If he hadn't gone that way, and we had all focused on the essentials, that's where I would stick to. But you see, I'm unable to take part in a discourse that is driven by selectivity, deliberately tailored to seek partisan political capital. I am unable to okay. suffer that. So, so um, <laughs> would you say... Um, and the financials. Right. By this report, mm. by 2013 October, government had begun to fail in delivering on the certificates that were put out. And that is why by 2015, the contractor, though still on site, was executing absolutely nothing. nothing. Absolutely. So anybody who comes to tell you by December 2016, they were executing, the contractor was working, tell the person that I see he's peddling an obvious untruth, not a lie. Okay. <laughs> the debts that have been counted, have been counted within one year. The question is still... Within the one year of this administration, that the debts were being counted from 1 to 10 to 15 to 20 and to 24, that's the official figure. Can there be any excuse in the manner that President Akufuado puts out? In which manner? I, I, I think government ought to take some responsibility for its failure to execute the program from January 2017 to now. No, I'm not going to exclude that this administration from any blame. They are part of the problem. We must insist on that. Okay. 
And that is why people are protesting. Okay. And that is why now they are seeking to do something. But I say that it is just not fair and just for especially those who also had responsibility to execute this project to come today and give you a wrong picture. First fair of points. all, they tell you it was part of Gang of Four. That's Fair not points. Factual. Fair points. Now, uh